7th century, year 680 CE, Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of Islam's prophet Muhammad, was slain during the Battle of Karbala. This event cemented the division between Sunni and Shiite Muslims, which rages to this day. Hussein's body was interred near the battle site, and his severed head was buried elsewhere. Most Shia believe the head was buried in Damascus, then transferred to a town called Ashkelon on what we now call the Gaza Strip before finally being moved again to Cairo. Many Muslims of the Shia variety still worship at the Gaza site, which is now occupied by the Barzilai Medical Center, an Israeli hospital used mainly to treat victims of the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Sheikh Moiz Tarmal leads pilgrims to this site, many of whom come from nations unfriendly toward Israel. The irony that the religious and political animus which leads Shiite militias to launch bombs toward Israeli targets that surround their own venerated spots is not lost on everyone. The hospital's director, Dr. Ron Lobel, said, This is one of the absurdities of the Middle East. Sheikh Tarmal also took note of the risk the rockets represent for the devout Muslims, saying, Many rockets do come into Ashkelon, but that place has always been safe at the end, so we believe it is spiritual. A translation of an Islamic State manifesto entitled Women in the Islamic State Manifesto and Case Study is helping a Western anti-terrorism think tank centered in Britain to understand the kind of propaganda the Islamic State and other militant organizations are using to attract Muslim women to their ranks. The treatise was published in Arabic on a jihadist website, but an English translation by the Quilliam Foundation is helping to shed light on this very foreign manner of thinking. Reportedly written by the all-female al Khanza Brigade, the policy statement compares life in the more secular Saudi Arabia to territories such as Mosul, Iraq, and Raqqa, Syria, which have been taken under ISIS control, painting the Saudi experience as more decadent, less spiritual, and more demeaning. The template also pushes the idea that womanhood is celebrated by allowing women the fulfillment of motherhood, religious training, and in some cases the pursuit of life goals such as medical preparation or possibly jihadi training and experience if necessary. In a written statement regarding the translation, Quilliam's managing director, Haras Rafiq, said, There has been a huge amount of speculation about what the role of the women who join Islamic State, often dubbed jihadist brides, is. The translation clarifies a number of issues that have been obscured by the language barrier until now. It allows us to look past the propaganda banded about on social media by Western supporters of the Islamic State. Five churches have been attacked in Delhi in the last two months without any proper response from the PM or any other central minister. This declaration and accusation leveled by a Catholic priest in Delhi, India, identified only as Father Lawrence came as police rounded up several hundred demonstrators, priests and nuns included, who had gathered outside a cathedral with the intent to march on the home of Rajnath Singh, the recently elected home minister and member of the majority Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party. The gathering was deemed unlawful as police have enacted a law known as Section 144, which prohibits large gatherings for purposes of protest during times of civil unrest. The recent spate of anti-Christian assaults on church property include burglary, vandalism, and arson. Protesters believe that the government is not doing enough to protect their rights and property since the new government has assumed power late last year. In a report on Al Jazeera, Associate Professor of Religion at Butler University, Chad Bauman, said, Since the elections, certain more anti-Christian groups in India have gotten emboldened and have engaged in somewhat more provocative acts. Following the demonstration, Singh issued a statement via Twitter announcing that he had met with Christian leadership and assured them that his government would do what it could to stop the violence. 